And once again, from that hot bed of golf croquet in the U.S., the mountains of North Carolina, where Highlands Falls, High Hampton, Chattooga, and Sapphire Valley Croquet Clubs have gotten together to host the USCA Golf Croquet Nationals in 2022. We're back to Sapphire Valley today for a continuation of a quarterfinal match in the singles knockout. We'll be on court two, the one at the bottom there. These nationals take a lot of people to put on, and we can only name a few. Your tournament director is Jeff Sue, ably assisted by Eileen Sue and Mike Albert. Mike Albert is also the tournament manager, and Paul Newbecker is on the video camera. This event is put on and sponsored by the United States Croquet Association, which is also the sponsor of this channel now. From the USCA, you can get everything you need to know about getting involved in this marvelous sport of ours. This is a continuation of the singles knockout quarterfinal between Stephen Morgan and Matthew Essek in Game 1. It was pretty much back and forth, decided by Morgan at hoop 13 because he played blue at hoop 13 to win. Matthew's going to start the second game with red. He could start with yellow, but nobody's breaking the order that I've seen. And Matthew, ever the promoter of the game, makes sure that Paul is ready before he starts. So courtesy we much appreciate. These guys are defending and former national champions in golf croquet, and they're so closely matched that their dynamic grades are almost identical. And now he'll try to clear red. The hoops are set nominally at a sixteenth of an inch clearance, but as Jeff points out, with four venues, there's probably quite a bit of variation.
I'm pretty sure that against me, Stephen would just put blue on the halfway point to three. But he's playing Matthew, not me. Blue can get legally offsides in front of hoop three if it's in the same shot in which the hoop is scored. In order to get that opportunity, Stephen is taking the chance that Matthew's going to miss this. He would, of course, have liked for Blue to go a little bit farther. Yellow could advance red here, but red's in great position for a long run down to hoop four, so it's going to clear blue instead to preserve that opportunity. Hand grenades and horseshoes. Frank Robinson, legendary coach of the Baltimore Orioles, 1973. I can't believe that analogy isn't way older than that. And it's actually probably more relevant to baseball than croquet because close is frequently very useful in croquet. Yeah. 
Matthews long row K's have regressed to the mean in this game, but he's in the zone hoop shooting. And you'll notice how helpful these guys are in the offsides penalty box situation. And there's never any playing gotcha where you hope he doesn't realize you're offsides until you've played your next stroke, in which case you're not offsides anymore. That happened to me once back in first flight, but I've never seen it happen in championship flight. not I can't resist. The golfers will know the Lee Trevino story. Lee, aren't you afraid of getting hit by lightning again? 
No problem. I just hold up a one iron. Not even God can hit a one iron. Managing the risk of lightning strikes is not just an insurance liability thing for golf courses. Tall trees and wide open spaces make players very vulnerable to lightning. Lightning break. We're back. Black just scored six. Yellow plays to hoop seven. Blue got off size by clearing red, so that's legal. So I'm going to grab this chair. Yep. Well, professional would imply that I get paid. But. <laughs> well, you must do a good yeah. job. <laughs> so he was on the US 18, huh? Let me see if I can go to US 18. I got to ask Matthew how he decides what grip to use because I can't figure it out. I think here he wants to hit this ball hard, and the Solomon grip allows a nice big backswing so he can hit it hard without using lots of extra force. <coughs> And here, just standing up in front of the hoop is a waste of time because that's an easy jump shot for Matthew. So he's got to cut yellow off the line of the hoop. There we go. See, this is This is a dangerous shot. It'd be easy to put black in the hoop, but he can't rely on red because it's not going to be there.
I haven't seen these guys do much promoting a partner from a long distance. They only do it in this situation where it's around the hoop and precise little strokes can be effective. And finally, out of patience with the interminable sequence of clearances, Stephen's going to go for it. Red was probably just marginally in the way. He was trying to jaws it for the long run down to hoop eight. He has to be very careful here not to put too much follow through on this because that will double tap in this situation. Tied up, but Matthews back on serve, playing first to the odd numbered hoops. You would think he'd try to clear yellow, but that would just be to the short side, so he's trying to block instead. He's trying to put red between black and hoop 10 and avoid a double tap at the same time. It's critical that red and black not be in contact at the end of that stroke because then Steven could just do a big roll shot because there's no double tap prohibition when the balls are in contact. I'm a little surprised he didn't lay up with yellow because black is legally off sides in perfect position over next to hoop alone.
another gentle little promotion. Matthew's ahead, so instead of setting up with red, where blue could have cleared it way away from hoop 13, he positions defensively. Sometimes you don't overthink it. You just go with the flow. So Matthew ties it up. Give us a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and be ready for the exciting decider in game three.